Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. First of all, thanks to the meeting organizer for inviting me. I'm very pleased to be here. And also, thank you for putting me last, because I know that this is the last things that you will remember from today, after all the data that you've been poured open or not, I don't know, that you've been poured during the day, I will probably uh, be your last uh, uh, recollection. Uh, there is someone else as, as well at the end, but still, I think uh, I'm going to make the most out of it, uh, or to try to. First of all, I would like to um, briefly uh, introduce you to ANEC. ANEC is the association representing consumers in standardization. Why do we exist at the European level? Because in Europe, standards are used to complement legislation and policies. That's not the same in other regions of the world, but there is a tradition in Europe to do so. And in order to have uh, um, democracy in action, you need all parties around the discussion table when standards are set. Now, I would like uh, to uh, focus my presentation not so much on the open data discussion, we had it already a lot this morning, but more about uh, how in general openness and uh, interoperability can help consumers face challenges that uh, we are all facing. And one of the uh, most important challenges, it has not been discussed so much so far, and I'm quite surprised, is the demographic trends that our societies are going to face. And it is uh, the uh, the fact that uh, the elderly population, and when I say elderly, it's uh, uh, around 80 years old, which is quite important, is going to be a very important uh, um, share of our total population. And according to Eurostat statistics, uh, it's going to be most 11% in 2015. It might be in, seem quite far away, but when we do policy, we do it for the future as well. And we need to keep that into account. And of course, with age comes disability. Uh, baby boomers generation that uh, is, was born after the World War War is going to be uh, on a pension very soon. And when you are retired, you change your consumption patterns, of course, as well. It's going to be a challenge for our health, our pension systems, but in general. From a consumer point of view, what is the problem? Is simple access to information society services. This is because, of course, at present, um, there are some interoperability issues between some assistive technologies that some category of consumer are using, I'm thinking about the blind consumer, to access the internet. And therefore, um, it's something that we do not wish to see in the future, but we do know that interoperability and open standards are going to be really the way to solve this problem. Uh, the example of blind people, blind people use screen readers, you might be aware of it, and they need to be, it's a software, specific software that needs to be interoperable with the operating system or whatever. It's not as easy as such. Um, and because it is an issue, there is a, a commitment in the digital agenda for Europe to solve this problem, to try to address this problem. In order to support the Commission in this uh, endeavour, uh, we have launched a campaign with the association representing people with disabilities, with the association representing blind people and also older people. And uh, it's a, a, a campaign that we call Access Denied, and it is uh, to deliver legislation to ensure web accessibility based on W3C standards, the web accessibility standards. And I think there is a consensus to say that those are open standards. I think they are even patent-free and royalty-free completely. And what we also we think it's very important that accessibility, e-accessibility, is to be fostered by uh, openness, but also by innovation, by innovative uh, way of uh, um, providing services to consumers, because we do know that innovation is uh, uh, very much linked to uh, serving all the um, uh, segments of consumers in a society. Another challenge that has been mentioned uh, early on is energy. Energy provision, energy distribution, energy consumption. This is uh, something that at the European level has been addressed uh, uh, with an initiative called 2020. Uh, and uh, um, it is about reducing uh, certain sources of uh, uh, energy and introducing renewable energy. Uh, one way to do it is, it has already been mentioned, smart energy systems, smart meters, smart grids. What is this all about? 
we can describe them very, very simply as energy systems that are still built on uh, steel and copper, but the, there is an additional ICT layer to manage the uh, distribution and also the use of the energy. Therefore, there is an um, interface interaction with consumers. This is also part of the digital agenda for Europe. But as consumers, we are facing challenges. And of course, uh, um, the challenges are that uh, there is uh, a new technology, you need to adapt to it. There is going to be a learning curve. This is normal, absolutely. But there are also uh, functionalities which can be designed in a way in order to increase consumer acceptance. And one of the most, uh, let's say, um, important concerns of consumer is their privacy protection, personal data and privacy protection. This is something that has already been an obstacle in the rollout of smart metering system in some countries. I'm thinking about the Netherlands, for example. Uh, in other countries, it doesn't seem to be the same. Uh, in Sweden, everything works perfectly, we've been told, but that's the Scandinavian countries. They often have a very positive um, experiences all the time. However, data access and ownership and how to handle this data is really key for consumer acceptance. And um, the um, position that we have is that privacy should be designed since the beginning of the system. This is actually a general posi position. It is the so-called principle of privacy by design. And of course, open standards and interoperability are there to serve this principle. However, there is another concern, is that too much openness, too much interoperability, or let's say interactive in an open environment, is it compatible with privacy protection? Is it compatible with the principle of personal data protection in the European uh, system, they are called uh, informed consent data minimization. This is something that uh, is ex uh, um, especially sensitive for medical data. So um, openness of data is, yes, of course, something that consumers are supporting, but there needs to be a definition of what data is it or, whom, or whose data is it, because it's extremely important to make a difference between personal data and non-personal data. And the challenge is that in an open environment, in, in an interconnected environment, the boundary between object data or non-personal data and personal data is going to become more and more blurred. So how do you define and how do you put in place the uh, policies that uh, you need to do when data is personal? And finally, I would like to take uh, um, advantage of your presence here uh, just to, to um, maybe put it the co in, the com in context uh, the discussion that we are having on open standards today. Because as you know, the European Commission has embarked in a revision of the standardization system. Uh, Commissioner Cross mentioned it this, it this morning. There is a proposal to use more standards coming from different sources for public procurement in the ICT sector. This is something that uh, uh, for the time being, uh, we are a bit skeptical about, uh, and the reason why is that we believe uh, and we fear that this would lead to a certain fragmentation. And we speak as a practitioner of standard making because our role is to represent consumers in standard making. It is very difficult to do uh, your uh, a representative job if you have uh, many uh, instances that are developing um, standards. But the other fear that we have is that uh, open standards are good, but they need to come from an open uh, process of standard setting. And it is something that uh, uh, we do know it's going to be checked and verified, but still um, it's important to keep it into account. Finally, um, the aim of open standards is generally interoperability. This is very good. There are other concerns of consumer which are linked to interoperability, uh, but they are, uh, they are equally important. I mentioned them, accessibility, security, and data protection. Those should not be forgotten from a um, policy point of view. Thank you very much.